Hi everyone. Let's talk about atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective for the artist is essentially painting the illusion of light and color to create the illusion of depth. We are, after all, trying to create this illusion of three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. As we've talked about in the past, one of the, um, the four visual cues that we use to enhance the illusion of three dimensions are strong light source, overlapping shapes, scale, the use of scale, and linear perspective. Well, this fifth one, atmospheric perspective, is essentially what is happening in the air when dust particles and water particles, pollution or particles from humidity um, create a sense of depth. Um, now, as there are some rules that apply to atmospheric perspective, and I'll just run through them real quickly. As a rule, as things go back in space, they tend to get less saturated color. Also, the contrast dissipates. Um, the temperature gets cooler and bluer. The edges get softer as things go back in space. And the amount of texture dissipates as you go back in space. That's essentially a summary of the five tools that we use as painters to enhance this illusion of atmospheric perspective. They are simply value, color, color chroma, color temperature, edges, and texture. As it relates to value, that's probably the most important one. Contrast decreases as space recedes and of course increases as it comes forward. Color chroma decreases, it gets grayer or more chromatic as it comes forward. Grayer as it goes away, more chromatic as it comes forward. Temperature, color essentially cools and blues as it goes away and gets warmer as it comes closer. Now that's just a rule. In nature, we can see that rule violated. For example, if you're looking at a distant, um, distant headland at sunrise or sunset when the sun is low and the overall light is essentially a warmer orange or yellowy light, then of course, you know, your light will be uh, warm. But the general rule is, as space goes back, things get cooler and bluer and lighter. Uh, also edges. Edges get softer. Soft edges recede. Hard edges come forward. And lastly is texture, or marks per square inch. The illusion of uh, naturalistic textures on form comes forward, and it, that texture, as it dissipates, uh, creates the illusion of space and things receding in space. Another way to think of atmospheric perspective is you can think of it as a sheer curtain. Now, because the air is dense with moisture particles and pollution particles, uh, water particles, whatever it is uh, that light is passing through, bouncing off of, um, reflecting, as things recede into the distance, there are more veils of atmosphere to look through. Now, the more layers there are, the less we can see, of course. So... Now, if you paint what you see, comparing shapes to each other, you'll automatically get the feeling of atmospheric perspective. I have a very simple exercise to do here, which will help you understand and practice the skill sets required to portray the illusion of atmospheric perspective. And I'm going to do a very simple mountain motif these are distant mountains, okay? We'll have, we'll have three mountains in our imaginary landscape. <clears throat> so the visual tools required to create the illusion of atmospheric perspective are a sensitivity to value, color, temperature, edges, and texture. And so what we're going to attempt to do here is a brief little exercise that you can try at home or in your studio, um, to do just that. And so let's follow along, shall we? It's very simple. So I'm going to use uh, just three colors here that are pre-mixed. And one is the color of my sky. And I'm gonna, I made swatches over here on the left side. And this is just cerulean blue and white. It's oil paint with a little... I put a little liquid in there just to speed up the drying time. And that is our cerulean. 
Okay. And then our, uh, our mountainscape, we're going to make that a green color, a very chromatic green. There we are. And I think I use sap green, maybe a little cad yellow medium and a pinch of white. You can use whatever you want. Really, this is more about understanding the concept and the exercise, right? So we have a mountain color and then we have our sky color. And basically the, the simple concept is in order to push the illusion of space back, in order to, to create the illusion of receding space, we simply add more sky color. And the more sky color we add to our, our green color, the more it actually looks like it's moving back in space. So here is, I added a little sky color. I added more of the sky color to this green, and we have this second step here. Okay. If I add a little bit more sky color, let me do that here. And again, I'm just using a, a pinch of liquid and I've got cerulean blue, and, and that's what happens when I add a little more sky color. So it gets cooler. That's the um, highest chromatic color of the green. It, it comes forward. So we're going to paint our, our foreground mountain in green. And then as it goes into the middle ground, we'll hit it with a little more of the sky color, and then... The mountain back here gets even more sky color. So you can see it gradually gets cool. It cools off until we have the sky color right there. Um, very good. Now, to further enhance the illusion, we'll put a little texture and shadow into our mountain. And I'm, I'm not getting too fancy here. I've got a little black and, and I, I put a pinch of white in it. So in other words, I have a little dark gray. And so that's going to be our shadow color. And I made a little bar over here. And so the idea is the um, our green mountain will just have um, it will have shadow and light. This is very simple. I'm not pretending this is high art by any stretch of the imagination. But let's have some fun here. It's a, it's a really simple exercise. Okay, there you go. All right, so very simply put, this is a three color exercise. Cerulean blue and a little white or whatever sky color you wish to choose, it really doesn't matter. You could do a warm sky as well. You could do orange and white, it really doesn't matter. You could have a brown mountain foreground, it doesn't matter. Three colors, green, a little um, shadowy color, I just chose black, and cerulean blue. Um, now as my, um, as my shadow color goes back, I do the same thing. I simply add a little bit more of the sky color to my gray, and it pushes it back. At this point, you can predict what the next step is, right? You guessed it. I add a little more sky color, and we push that back even further. Right? So we're simply adding sky color to the blackish gray color. And it gets cooler, lighter, and bluer as it goes back into space. So here you can see the chroma. This sort of just isolates the concept of the chroma and what's happening there. It also illustrates the temperature. Color cools as it recedes. And so with brushwork, we will now execute edges and texture. And then voila. 
Alright. I'll start with my foreground mountain. This is just an exercise. You can start wherever you'd like. Very fancy. Yeah. I'm trying to keep it somewhat textural. Texture creates interest and texture or marks per square inch come forward. Again, not pretending we're making high art here. <laughs> Although I didn't have to tell you that. Just one look at this masterpiece. All right. Okay, so just for fun, let's put on our sky color. Remember our sky color is just cerulean blue and a little white, but you can use any color you'd like. Just like in a real sky, maybe I'll add a little white, a little more white as it gets closer to the horizon. If you're out on a clear day and you look straight up at the zenith, you'll see something that looks almost cerulean blue, uh, ultramarine blue. And as your gaze makes its way towards the horizon, it becomes a little bit more cerulean. And that's what you're seeing here, cerulean. And then as it gets... As, as the sky touches the horizon, it typically gets a little yellower and lighter. I'm just going to lighten it here. I won't even add the yellow. I want to keep this, just to, as an exercise, keep it fairly pure. I'm just adding a little bit more white as it gets closer to the horizon. Okay. Piling through it. Piling through it. Very good. So let's move on. Mountain number two. Now again, mountain number two is this one right. Here's the green and here's the gray. So I'll draw from these two piles. In mountain number two, I'm be, I'm, I will add deliberately less texture. I'm also um, going to have a smoother edge. I'll keep the edge a little smoother on this one. So I'll try to maintain and be cognitive of the harder edge in the mountainscape in front of it. Now I'll grab a little bit of the gray. And we'll work that into the, the shadowy area. And less textural, right? And I, uh, less of a contrast as well.
You can take as much time as you'd like with these. I'm just really trying to pile through this. Mm, to be fair, I'll add a little more texture in there. I mean, a little more contrast. You can get away with a little bit more. Okay. Good. That leaves us to our third mountain, our third grassy knoll. I'm loading the brush with a little more green and more sky color. So I'm drawing from this pile. It's going even further back in space. You can see it's getting lighter. And this edge will be softer and even more textural than the mountain in, for, in front of it. It adheres to create the illusion that things are going back in space. There's four visual cues that enhance the illusion to three dimensions. Overlap is one of them, right? So just by virtue of having these little mountain shapes in front of one another, it tells our brain something is in front of something. And therefore, there must be space. Strong light source, linear perspective, and overlap. And scale. One, two, three. There we go. I'm going to soften this edge here where these two meet. So I'm just running a clean brush over these two shapes. Where they meet. And <clears throat> to finish it off, I will um, mix up just a little bit of the, uh, the gray that has even more sky color in it right here. You guys remember that? And just, just kind of little touches here and there. Again, these can be any color you want them to be. But your land masses will be informed by the local color of the sky. So if it's a warm sky, then so be it. So there you go. Just for fun, I may um, add a little bit more white and, and distinguish this plane here. Not this plane, but where the sky meets the distant mountain and beefing up the contrast. But it's a very simple exercise and it's all right there. Value, that's probably the most important one that enhances that illusion of space going back. The contrast certainly decreases from one to two and then to three. Value, color, color chroma. The chroma comes forward. Color temperature, it cools off as it recedes. Of course, edges. And finally, texture. Okay, just keeping things soft in the background. Making sure that distant edge is super soft when compared to the edges in front of it. We always use the term when compared to. So, there you go. Atmospheric perspective. Hope that helps everyone. Thank you.